so this is a patient of mucormycosis with maggots with nasal epistaxis that is a lot of nasal bleeding happening as you can see i'm trying to show you this is a patient's uh right-sided nasal cavity that's the coena you can see that's the chicken tube orifice that's four sort of rosenmuller behind and as the patient is trying to swallow you can see a lot of debris around here you can see a dead maggot right there you can see the live maggot so what is trying what i'm trying to show you are the live maggot now that's the spinoid sinus superior part and that you can see a lot of crusting and raw bone exposed so this is a patient of chronic mucormycosis now this patient is having a lot of nasal epistaxis right sided orbital periorbital edema you can actually see multiple live larvae with huge size you can see that's the opposite side left spinoid sinus full of uh, maggots and you can see the posterior septum is destroyed right there and you can actually see both spinoid sinuses opening and that you can see a huge maggot they're like multiple huge maggots lodging themselves in the superior part of the spinoid sinus on both the sides so you can see how close they are to the skull base that's a dead maggot right there it's not moving so it's dead that's the coelia with all the mucoid secretions right there so the history of this patient is that this patient had covid one year back and he got treatment for covid and following that he got uh, invasive fungal sinusitis he had typical symptoms of invasive fungal sinusitis, mucormycosis. Uh, you can see the patient's right side at present. It's showing exposure of raw bone. You can actually see the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone and the pterygoid bone undergoing raw destruction. The maxillary sinus is opened up. There is no surgery done before. And you can see there is no inferior turbinate. There is no middle turbinate. You can actually see a small part of the superior turbinate right there, very small part. And you can see there is posterior septectomy, natural auto posterior septectomy already done with the disease so far. And you can see live maggots everywhere. So I could see live maggots in the superior ethmoid region as well. Now, there is no surgery whatsoever done to this patient, but this patient is a long term mucormycosis patient and uh, the patient did not undergo any kind of surgery it was patient's choice and this is the left side nasal cavity you can see the middle turbinate quite intact with a lot of mucoid secretion however there is synechy between the septum and the middle turbinate so i'm just suctioning out the active bleeding which is coming from the spinoid sinus mucosa because of the presence of uh, the, uh, the maggots you can actually see huge body multiple septations uh, easy identification of the maggots are on there so i'm just going to remove all the excess uh, blood coming into the spinoid sinus and i'm going to just uh, keep the area dry free of blood and i can see i'm using my suction to just uh, reorient the maggot inside so later on, so as you can see, with the help of the suction itself, you can actually see the live maggot being removed. So before coming to me, the patient had visited some other ENT doctor in some other state or district. And there it was uh, removed. The maggots were removed as well, somewhere around 25, 25 on the first day. 10 15 on the other day so total around 35 to 40 maggots have been removed so far that you can see that's the posterior wall of the spinoid sinus uh, and you can see a lot of multiple whitish foci over there but this opening is very small So as you can see, I'm doing nasal irrigation with a long suction cannula and you can see the solution is completely a diluted solution of turpentine oil with normal saline. Now, this is uh, the patient's right nasal cavity and I'm trying to show you a structure right there. You can see at first, 
look, it appears to be as a crust, but when I used my tactile sensation with the suction cannula, that is actually the bone. It is the bone of the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone and the medial pterygoid plate, the superior border of the coena. So that is that bone which has undergone complete necrosis because of mucormycosis infection and superadded maggot infection. So if I give you a closer look on that, you can actually see as we go inside that the coena superior part right there, you can see the secretions mounting up and that's the bone uh, below the spinoid sinus opening, the medial pterygoid plate region and the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone. So that bone is completely undergone necrosis because of the mucormycosis infection. Uh, remember, this patient is completely widely awake. He's conscious, oriented, no any kind of anesthesia so far. And you can see the destruction of the medial wall of the maxilla as well. The unsinate process, everything is undergone destruction. There is posterior segment of the septum also destroyed. The left spinoid sinus opened up by the maggots and is visible from the right nasal cavity as such. So as you can see, I'm trying to use my forceps and I'm in the spinoid sinus right now. I'm trying to remove that huge maggot from inside and that's the maggot removed. You can actually see how the movements of the maggots are happening right there. So I remove the maggots and put them in the solution of turpentine oil so that they get, uh, they don't survive for much longer inside. So that's the left spinoid. I'm trying to open up the patient's left spinoid and that's the maggot I'm trying to remove from the patient's left spinoid sinus right now. So that's a huge maggot. You can actually see all the segments and that's the turpentine solution inside. They will die in some time after that. So you repeat that, you visualize all the sinuses which has uh, been destroyed, which have been destroyed by the maggots themselves. Try to remove, try to look out for any sort of movement inside. But at the same time, be sure to know your limits of your walking area. You do not injure any area near the skull base. You do not injure any area near the lamina papyracea. You do not injure any area in the posterior part of the maxillary sinus to avoid any injury to the spinopalatine artery. You can see the amount of the maggots inside, the size of the maggots inside, completely occupying the spinoid sinus inside. So these are very huge larvae. Now, judging by the appearance, the size of the maggots you can have, they are definitely around four to five days in age. And definitely they have been eating up a lot of uh, tissues inside. So this patient is having mucormycosis as well as uh, maggots, super aided maggots infection. So this patient did not seem to be, you know, very unhygienic, though still he is having a lot of maggots inside. Uh, this patient comes from a village area, so accidentally he may have been exposed to that fly inside for which you can see all the maggots now. So we're still trying to remove the maggots from the left spinoid sinus. So as long as the maggots are inside, the patient will continue having the um, nasal bleed. So there are a few signs which uh, tell us that the maggots are no longer inside. So the, this patient is having right-sided orbital swelling uh, because the maggots are more on the right side but still on the left side as well. On the right side, ethmoids also has been affected by the maggots. So there is right side orbital swelling, blurring of vision, however the vision is intact. So this is because of the mucormycosis as well as the maggots. So if by chance the skull base is there, if there's any defect in the skull base area, the maggots may just try to enter that bony skull base defect may also enter the brain intracranial cavity. So you have to be very, very careful 
while you're working in this area because uh, already the fungus has eroded all the bony structures plus the maggots have eroded all these soft tissue structures so even a slight gentle push on any bony structure with your instruments may give you a CSF leak and you do not want to have a CSF leak in this patient right now so that's a lot of complication and the prognosis is not that good however the maggots will be cleaned in a period of three to five days uh, the tissue will start healing there will be no bleeding as such but then the underlying mucor mycosis infection needs to be treated by surgery proper full house fest along with skull based debridement as much as possible so as you can see i'm still trying to remove the maggots from inside so as long as you keep on removing them keep on giving the turpentine oil wash the maggots will keep on coming out but if the sinus opening is too small as you can see that is all the debris which has been collected inside now that's the maxillary sinus if you go inside that also has been opened up automatically with the infection inside and the presence of maggots so as you can see i'm trying to remove all the debris collection the mucoid secretion from the patient's right maxillary sinus and i'm so sure the right maxillary sinus will be also hosting a lot of maggots inside so as you can see one maggot is trying to crawl itself outside a huge maggot just came out of the patient's right maxillary sinus now you got to be very careful and quick enough because these maggots are very clever little creatures they are very fast they will just start running the moment they see any opening they will try to go inside that opening so you got to be very fast enough to remove them and they are slippery as hell so if you have a very smooth surface instrument do not use that because they are very slimy and slippery so i'm using my suction and i can see that the way the maggot is moving inside it's a very bulky maggot so you can imagine since many days it has been there inside eating on the flesh so assuming that there will be a lot more maggots on the patient's right maxillary sinus so you got to do a proper surgery uh, by keeping the patient under general anesthesia if there is fitness at all you got to debride everything which is necrosed you can see that's the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus near the perpendicular plate of the palatine bone and you can see five more maggots moving inside so what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to use a nasal pack uh, which is completely soaked in diluted turpentine solution never use directly concentrated one because that's going to injure and irritate the patient's nasal mucosa now this will go in the patient's spinoid sinus the remaining part will go in the nasal cavity and the second one will go into the patient's right maxillary sinus so we'll keep there for five to ten minutes the maggots will start crawling out because they cannot tolerate the uh, the presence of turpentine oil once i do that i'll be able to remove all the maggots which are crawling up now right now i'm going to show you the area of the lamina papyracea now that's the maxillary sinus now where you can see my suction that's the level of the roof of the maxilla anything above that you can see is lamina papyracea you can actually see that the white focal yellowish patchy erosions on the wall are clinical suggestions of invasive fungal sinusitis in the bone that is bony invasion patchy localization of the fungus erosion necrosis and there is a lot of soft tissue damage as well so that is the basic area of the lamina papyracea and this patient is having severe swelling on the right orbit so you gotta know your limits the skull base the lamina papyracea the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus the coena for which the carotid may be uh, decent as well in the spinoid sinus so the optic canal could be also decent you got to be careful of that. <clears throat> now, this is a patient's oral cavity. 
you can actually see the patient's hard palate. Wait a second. You can see the patient's hard palate is completely normal intact. There is no blackish erosion. The patient had reduced mouth opening as such. Uh, but you can see the palate is completely normal. The patient is having posterior nasal bleed somewhat because of the maggots. So there is no evidence, clinical evidence or sign that the mucormycosis has reached the palate. This is a patient's right ear. You can actually see that his patient's right ear is having infection right there. Plus, also at the superior, posterior superior region, it has a lot of granulations. So it could be unsafe ear and uh, could be OME as well. So this is proper infection, pus, granulations, posterior superior retraction. So it could be unsafe ear on the right side. Now the reason we check the ears is that uh, the maggots may enter the ischiacin tube and from the ischiacin tube it may enter into the middle ear cavity and from the middle ear cavity it can devour or it can eat up the ossicles and the tympanic membrane and may come out of the ear as well. So you have to be very careful. The opposite ear has wax inside. So the oral cavity is good. The ear as I showed now this is the nasal cavity. So we, we got to repeat this session every day until and unless all the maggots are outside now the sign where which you can tell on the basis of which that these maggots are no more inside is that the orbital swelling will reduce you have to start the patient on medications uh, second thing is that the nasal epistaxis will be stopped it will stop automatically because as long as the maggot is alive and present inside there will be active bleeding as soon as the maggot is dead or the maggots are no more inside the bleeding will stop that's also an indication there will be no pain inside so you can actually see that no maggots are overlying in any area right now but still it is quite possible that the maggots will be lodged inside as you can see that's the posterior most part of the patient's right maxilla and you can still see a lot of maggots moving inside there so unless we do a modified endoscopic denkers in this patient to get rid of all the medial wall of the maxilla we cannot have a proper access in the maxilla so as you can see in the posterior most part of the maxilla you can see three huge maggots right there so let me just suction this out you can see the maggot you can see the second maggot inside this is the area of the posterior wall of the, you know, the maxilla behind which will be the infratemporal fossa and the pterygopalatine fossa. So if the bone is necrosed, your spinopalatine artery could be decent as well. So you got to make sure you remove all the maggots on daily basis for three to five days, max to max seven days till the maggots are all out. Then if the maggots are not coming out, still alive, still heavily bleeding inside, the patient should be undertaken for routine fest surgery. And if the patient has consent, they can be taken up for skull base debridement as well. You can see a lot of maggots are still present. You can see the actual bone, the pterygopalatine bone, the pterygoid bone, lower part inside the posterior wall of maxilla, all eroded because of mucormycosis. You can actually see the maggots lying there. You can actually see the bone completely necrosed, superior to that. So this patient will require complete fess along with complete debridement and skull base exposure and graft uh, placement if at all there's any leak.